Carver C5 surf skate trucks. Let's see what we're talking about. Lately, I've had loads of fun recording a couple of videos on my Carver Triton surf skate, trying to adapt it to doing some lip tricks and some bowl riding. And some of you were kind enough to comment in and suggest for those sort of missions, I might enjoy the Carver C5 surf skate trucks. The C5 trucks are designed to still give you that surf skate experience, but are more easily adapted to street skating, bowl skating, and also doing transition lip tricks. So when I heard about these, I thought, yeah, I've got to get me some of that. They come in a rather nice looking box. And in the package, you get a C5 truck, which is for the front. It has the reverse kingpin that we all know and love. And that's the one that turns really tight and gives you that loose front end like a surfboard. And you also get a C4 Carver truck, which is more like a normal independent truck. And you can see the orientation is the same as a standard skateboard truck. You also get the hardware, which is pretty long. So I cut that down when I fitted these. And you also get the risers, which I popped in just to stop the wheel bite. The back truck kingpin is nicely hidden away, but it did occur to me that this front kingpin really sticks out. And because it's in front of the truck, I thought that might catch when I'm doing carve grinds and 50-50 grinds, etc. So I took the liberty of getting out my angle grinder. And once I'd set the tension on this front truck to where I wanted it, I just ground down the excess kingpin with a view to it not catching. And I think once I tested it on my coping at home, I could see that this cleared. So that gave me confidence to try those grinds. I thought for the purposes of this video, to provide some context, it might be helpful to use my standard bowl riding setup with independent trucks and the Andy Anderson deck as a benchmark for comparison. Not so much to find out which trucks are best, but as I use that board for bowl skating and transition skating, I thought it'd be interesting to see what the C5 trucks brought to the table and at what cost. Both setups are identical in terms of the components. The only difference is the surf skate has yellow coloured wheels and that'll help you identify if I'm riding the surf skate or the standard indie setup. So the first thing I notice when I place these two setups alongside each other is due to the reverse kingpin of the C5, the front truck is slightly back from where you would expect it to be on the independent truck. This makes for a slightly shorter wheelbase. So on the Indy truck setup, it's 18 inches from axle to axle. And on the C5 setup, it makes it 17 and a half inches. So just a half an inch less on the wheelbase, just due to the way this reverse kingpin front truck sets up. The second thing is that these trucks are just a touch higher. Not really loads to write home about, but they do add just a little bit of height to your standard setup. I pop both setups on the scales and the C5 trucks are just a touch heavier. I'm using the hollow forged Indy trucks. So I guess using standard Indy trucks, you'd be in a very similar ballpark in terms of the weight. I also weighed each of the C4 and the C5 trucks. And the C5 truck is slightly heavier, and I think that's where the extra weight is coming from. It did make me wonder if it would affect the balance of the board having different weight trucks. And I'll come to that when we start talking about getting this bad boy up in the air. So following the setup, I couldn't wait to hit the streets, jumped on the C5 setup, and straight away it gave that familiar surf skate feel. The phenomenon of being able to pump speed into the board, keeping all four wheels on the deck through carving and pumping. And I really enjoyed the feel of doing some flatland riding on the Andy Anderson deck and being able to get that pumping and carving going, generating speed and not having to kick off. For comparison, I jumped on my indie truck setup and oh my gosh, I have to say it does feel a lot different. I have my Indy truck set really loose for bowl riding anyway, so I can pump and carve a little bit on the flatland. But I did find that the C5 truck with its extra wobbly feel and the reverse kingpin gives you that elliptical carve that allows you to generate the speed really easily. With the Indies, it was just a bit more of a struggle because that gives you a symmetrical carving radius due to both trucks turning 
in the same way. It's worth sharing a little health and safety tip at this point. I've noticed in the past, that if you move from the surf skate trucks over to regular trucks, it can end in tears. And this time was no exception. I went back on the Indy and she fucked me off. The reason for this is your muscle memory gets used to the surfy carving turns of the surf skate. And when you jump on your regular skateboard setup, your muscles expect that same turny experience. You lean into the turn more than you normally would. The board goes straight on whoo, and you get bucked off. Hoo -hoo. I find on the flip side that going from a standard skateboard setup to the surf skate works absolutely fine because you're going from firmer to looser so you can work into it. Next up, I wanted to try some curb grinding. So obviously the indie trucks are famed for their grinding ability and I love to surf across the curbs. They make a great sound, they're really smooth. So I did a few curb grinds on the indie trucks to get my eye in. Transferring across to the surf skate setup, the C5 trucks definitely grind differently. They're made of a slightly different material and they sound very different on the curbs as well. The biggest difference, however, is setting up the grind. This wobbly front truck moves very, very quickly. So when you're trying to set the grind up, it can just get onto the curb and then quickly buck you off. And I found it did take a little bit of practice to get used to setting the surf trucks onto the curb. The key point was to just go straight and not try and carve in to the curbs. If I tried to carve into the curbs, it would turn too quickly and make it tricky to lock the front wheel on. So going straight just helped the front wheel to get locked in. And after a bit more practice, I managed to get some fun grinds on the surf skate and it gave me a real buzz to be able to surf up onto those curbs, grind down and then surf off. So the next thing I wanted to try was a mission round the bowl. And oh my gosh, these surf skate trucks work really nicely in a bowl setting. I was finding that going down the snake run, I could get nice and tight into all the pockets, started flirting with a few carve grinds. I did notice there was a slight surf truck idiosyncrasy that started happening when I tried carve grinds around the corners. And that was, it was possible to just get a grind with the front truck and the back truck not necessarily following through on the grind. I think the reason for that is that this front can turn so tight that you can actually turn the front across the coping and the back just stays where it is. So I found that if I change my technique to more of a surfing carve, where I actively swished my legs and my hips through the turn, and also if I change my angle to be more of a smooth arc across the coping, I could really push through the carve and get these back trucks to start to grind. So I could get a double truck grind, front truck and back truck. That worked really nice front side, and I could also get it to work backside with a little bit of practice, both trucks grinding across the coping. So following on from practicing my turns down the snake run and getting double truck grinds, both front side and back side on the corners, my attention quickly diverted to the deep bowl and I was keen to see if I could get some double truck grinds up on the coping in the deep bowl. Whew. Again, I needed a slight change of feel. I was finding that I was getting just the one truck grinding again because my usual arc was a little bit too tight. So I smoothed that arc out and also drove my hips and my legs through the turn to try and get these back trucks engaged. And after a little bit of practice, I managed to get a nice double truck carve grind in the deep bowl. I also tried my hand at some backside carving grinds in a deep bowl and those worked really nicely. Same tips all over again. I think overall, I'm just a little bit more confident with the feel of the indie trucks so I can get those bad boys right up there on the carving grinds, really step it out. With a little bit more practice, I was getting used to the feel of these surf trucks and I really enjoyed that surf skate feel of getting those carving grinds.
Next up, I thought I'd try a little fly out over the coping. And I have to say that this setup feels really good for flying through the air. As I alluded to earlier, these trucks are slightly different weights. And I wonder if this board being slightly unbalanced matches my slightly weird technique and makes flying through the air slightly easier for me. But it felt really comfortable flying out over the coping on this setup. Next up, it was time to try some lip tricks. And one of the things I was most curious about with these skateboard trucks is their ability to ride backwards. In the past, I've tried rock to fakies on my surf skate. To start with, I found it really hard. I had to rework my stance and really get my technique just right so that I could get it to track backwards without it bucking me off. I wanted to see how the C5 surf skate trucks would work backwards. So I tried a few rock to fakies and I found that if I reworked my front foot the same way as I did for my surf skate, and that was to get it more across the board and also behind the bolts, that after a little bit of practice, I could get a relatively smooth rock to fakie. To start with, you can see in this footage that the front trucks waver a little bit, and that's partly due to my poor technique, but it is due to the fact they are super twitchy. So getting that front foot in the right position, bending the knees and coming down super straight really helps riding fakie. Next up, I wanted to see if it was possible to carve and pump around the bowl fakie with the C5 surf truck setup. I set up a simple line with my independent trucks, which was to rock fakie and then go down, pumping through the snake run round the bottom of the bowl with some front side turns and then come back up the bowl, trying to maintain my speed, up over the waterfall and then into a tail stall and back out. Tried it with the surf skate trucks and I have to say going down the waterfall was a bit of a baptism of fire. Also trying to pump any of those speed bumps was pretty tricky. But after a little bit of practice, I was really stoked to be able to get round the bowl fakey and also get back up with enough speed to do my tail stall in the same way as I did with my indie truck setup. The real test for riding surf skate trucks backwards is to try a higher rock fakie, thus spitting you back down the transition at more pace, thus giving you more chance for these bad boys to wobble and buck you off. So I went down to the five and a half foot section and tried a rock fakie and oh my gosh, all hell broke loose, managed to woo, carve into it, got the trucks caught, fell off the back. So I reworked everything, reminded myself of my technique, tried to stay central, bent my knees and managed to get a couple of decent rock fakies. I also worked through some other lip tricks, starting with the backside axle stall. I was finding that to start with, with the backside axle stall on the surf trucks, it was allowing me to carve into the turn. And this was leaving me a little bit short into a feeble stall or making me go across the coping in a little bit of a 50-50 grind, just carving a little bit of momentum up onto the top. And that would give me a little bit of a grind across. So I had to rework my technique, again, being mindful to go straight up and not carve into the trick. Managed to get the hang of getting the axle stalls and getting those to come back in. Following a bit more practice on getting the rock to fakie nice and smooth, I was finding that was setting me up for fakie tricks a lot nicer. Got some tail stalls. I also got the fakie front side axle stall going, which felt really, really nice. Tried my hand at the nose stall and oh my gosh, all hell broke loose. I think out of all the tricks, this is the one I found the most different to use in the indie trucks. The reason being that your foot is right on the nose there. So when you come back down the transition out of a nose stall, she really wants to wobble and buck you off. Again, I found that just reworking my foot position so it's more into a back foot style stance, ready to go backwards, really helped. Once I got the nose stall working, I was set up to be able to try the fakie rock. So I tried a couple of fakie rocks clearing those back wheels. And again, manualing down the transition front ways seemed to work absolutely fine 
with this crazy C5 front truck. For a final mission, I wanted to try out these trucks on a slightly longer wheelbase deck. I've been having a bit of a love affair with my JM Duran 17 inch wheelbase longboard deck. So I thought I'd pop these trucks on this bad boy and see how she felt. And oh my gosh, what a difference a couple of inches makes, as the milkmaid said to the stable hand. Not off. I found that this longer deck with a more generous wheelbase afforded me a stance that was more like the one I'd use on a surfboard, a little bit wider, allowed me to bend my knees a little bit lower. So just cruising around the bowl, doing front side turns, felt really comfortable. This more surfy stance and feel inspired me to revisit one of my favourite surf inspired skateboard manoeuvres, the Burt Slide. <laughs> I found the surf trucks worked really well for the Burt slide. The biggest difference was the way that I could set up a pre-carve quite tight and that allowed me to send the back wheels out really aggressively. Trying those front side, I was remembering my key points of bending my knees, pumping up the transition. As I planted my hand to look with my head, that really sends the back legs out look straight back down the transition, and then as the feet start to come to the top of the turn, pull hard on the front hand, which allows you to maintain your motion as you go around that turn. With a little bit of practice, I was really enjoying the feel of these surfy trucks with a longer wheelbase, trying to pump right up to the top of the flat bank, get the wheels out the back like you're on a wave, Whoa, spraying out the back, oh my gosh, also wanted to see how they would deal with a revert. So I did my front side Burt slide right the way around 360 coming out fakey and found that this worked to treat, can really spin it round and then riding backwards, I'd already had a bit of a go with, but with the extra long wheelbase, it rode backwards even more smoothly. I tried a few backside Burt slides as well, coming right out the top. I don't like the look of those as much as the front side, so I don't practice those as much, but it was nice to get a few on the surfy setup. Well, that's it for the Carver C5 surf truck review. Overall, I think the key difference between the surf trucks and the independent trucks is the way in which they turn. I've never had any issues with the way indie trucks turn, especially when they're loosened off, but this provides a different style of turn. So this is an elliptical turn with the front being looser than the back. So therefore simulating the feel of a surfboard with the fins digging in and the rail carving loosely at the front. It all comes down to personal preference. Do you prefer that surfing carve feel at the expense of riding backwards? And it definitely is harder to ride backwards with a surf skate setup. Even this detuned surf skate setup is still trickier to ride backwards than your standard set of independent trucks. I have no doubt, however, with a bit more practice, you could get really confident with riding this backwards and doing all of your fakie tricks. I managed to rattle off most of my favorite fakie tricks pretty quickly after a little bit of practice, just working out what I needed to change to make this setup work. The yeah, that's right t-shirts are being delivered today. So I'm sending those bad boys out. If you've yet to order your t-shirt, head over to johnbishopsgate.bigcartel.com and I'll get one rushed out to you. If you're new to the channel, feel free to hit subscribe. I make new videos every week. You can also follow me on Instagram at johnbishopsgate. You can also join the John Bishop Skate Facebook group where it's easy to interact with other members of the community and post videos and photos of your progress. As ever, my name's been John Bishop, and I'm a middle-aged guy learning how to surf skate.